Here we're going to calculate a nice limit. So in particular, we're going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of sine of sine of sine, so on and so forth, of sine of x, where we have n total compositions. So before we get started here, let's introduce some notation so that this is a little bit easier to work with. So let's maybe set f sub 1 of x equal to sine of x. And so what we're doing is taking the argument of this limit and writing it as a sequence of functions. And via this structure, there's kind of an obvious recursive way of doing this. So like I said, we're gonna let f1 of x be sine of x. And for n bigger than or equal to one, we have f n plus one of x equals sine of f n x, like that. So let's notice that means f 2 x equals sine of sine x, and then so on and so forth. So I think it's pretty easy to see what's going on there. And furthermore, notice that this x is undetermined. So in fact, we're gonna find a single limit, or maybe it's a limiting function that satisfies this rule here for all values of x. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So we're gonna use the following fact. So I guess I should say we're working over the real numbers. That's the only way that we can use this fact. And that goes like this. So for all x, which are real numbers, we know sine of x comes from the interval minus one to one. So in other words, we know that negative one is less than or equal to sine of x, which is less than or equal to one. Now, rewriting that in terms of our sequence of functions here, we could write instead of sine of x here, we could write f sub 1 of x, like that. But then sine of x is an increasing function on the interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's pretty easy to check with calculus. So that implies that sine of negative 1 is less than or equal to sine of f of 1 of x, but that's just f sub 2 of x, which is less than or equal to sine of 1. And then we can keep applying sine to all parts of this inequality, and we can do that because we know that sine is an increasing function on the interval from minus pi over two to pi over two, and minus one to one is clearly a subset of minus pi over two to pi over two, given that pi over two is a little bit more than a half, uh, one and a half. Okay, so let's write one more here. So we have sine of sine of negative one is less than or equal to f three x, which is less than or equal to sine of sine of one. Okay, so that motivates us to look at the following two sequences. This sequence which is in compositions of sine evaluated at minus one, and this sequence which is in compositions of sine evaluated at one. So let's use that motivation to define those sequences. So let's say a sub one is equal to negative one, and then a n plus one is equal to sine of a sub n. So in fact, what we're doing is producing the left-hand side of this inequality with this sequence. And then furthermore, we'll define b sub 1 to be 1, and then we'll define b sub n plus 1 to be sine of b n, like that. And now we'll show that each of these converge, and we'll do that with the monotone sequence theorem. So that, let's make the following claim. And that is part of the monotone sequence theorem, the boundedness component. So let's maybe work with this A sequence first. We'll show that this A sequence is between negative one and zero, and this is gonna be true for all natural numbers n bigger than or equal to one. So notice that our base case is all sorted out, and that's because we know A1 is negative one, that can serve as our base case. So let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is that we suppose for 
sum k bigger than or equal to 1. We have negative 1 is less than or equal to a sub k, which is less than or equal to 0. Okay, and then what we'll do is we will apply the sine function to this, and applying the sine function to this using the fact that sine is increasing on this interval will give us sine of negative 1 is less than or equal to sine of a k, which is a k plus 1, which is less than or equal to sine of 0, which is 0. But sine of negative 1 is bigger than or equal to negative 1. So that means that we have a k plus 1 is bounded between our two parts. Okay, so now we can show that this thing is monotone as well. So notice the monotonicity is kind of wrapped up in the base case that we've already worked with. So let's not worry about that. So we'll make an induction hypothesis for the monotonicity. So let's suppose that for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we know that a k is less than or equal to a k plus 1. So we're going to show that this is monotonically increasing. So it's going to be bounded between negative 1 and 0, and it'll be monotonically increasing. Now let's apply sine to both sides of that. But sine is an increasing function, and we're on the appropriate interval for sine to be increasing. And that gives us a k plus 1 is less than or equal to a k plus 2, which is exactly what we need in order to prove this monotonically increasing. Which is exactly what we need in order to prove that this is monotonically increasing. Okay, so let's see what we have. We know that this sequence right here is bounded and it's increasing. Furthermore, it's bounded between negative 1 and 0. So the fact that it's bounded and increasing means that it converges. The fact that it's bounded between negative 1 and 0 means it must converge to something between negative 1 and 0. Okay, so now I'll leave maybe this as a homework, but you can do essentially the same thing for this bn sequence. You can show that it is bounded and decreasing, and it's in fact bounded between 0 and 1. So the fact that it's between 0 and 1 means that it converges to something between 0 and 1. Okay, so let's maybe summarize what we have on the next board, and then we're ready to finish it off. So far, we not only introduced a sequence of functions which will be used to evaluate our limit, but we introduced two sequences of numbers which will go along with the squeeze theorem to evaluate our limit. The first one was defined recursively by a1 equals minus 1 and then a n plus 1 is sine of a n. And the second one was also defined recursively just starting with the seed of 1. Now, so far, we've shown that our sequence of sequences of functions f n x, where that's n compositions of sine, lies strictly or lies between a n and b n, those sequences of numbers. And we showed that a n and b n both converge using the monotone sequence theorem. Furthermore, we know that a n converges to something which I'll call a between negative 1 and 0, and b n converges to something, again, which I'll call b between 0 and 1. Now we're ready to calculate these two limits. So let's say we've got a is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, which is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1, just by re-indexing a little bit. But that's going to be the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of a n, using the recursive definition here. But now sine is a continuous function, so that means we can bring that outside of the limit. We have the sine of the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, which is in fact equal to the sine of a. So what we're doing is looking for a so-called fixed point of the sine function, and that fixed point must lie on the interval from minus 1 to 0. 
but there's only a single fixed point of the sine function anywhere, and that's at zero. So in other words, the only solution to the equation a equals sine a is zero. So what we get from this is that a is equal to zero. And now using essentially the same strategy where we just replace a with b in all of these, you can see that b will also be zero. So I'll write that here. So b is also equal to zero. But let's notice that that sets up our squeeze theorem exactly. We have zero is less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of f sub n of x, which is less than or equal to zero. But that tells us that our limit is in fact equal to zero, and this holds for all values of x. Now before I let you guys go, I graphed these functions in Mathematica, so I'll just let some of those graphs go on the screen right now so you can see what happens as n approaches infinity. Okay, that's a good place to stop.